All right, what's up, guys? This is David, AK Reverse Long, and today I'm gonna do um, a podcast here in the the Blue Room. This is the Blue Room of the Los Angeles Athletic Club. So, on, I, I'm coming here, you know, to do this podcast. Well, first, it's kind of cold outside, so it's it's LA right now. It's like a little bit cold, but during the day, it's not too bad, man. I was actually I just did, came back from the jacuzzi earlier. Um, I did an Instagram live over there, so I've been doing a lot of those lately, uh, Instagram lives, and like I enjoy doing them, so I'm gonna keep doing them. Um, you know, you know what I mean. So it's helping me in a positive way, like interacting with people that like are interested in what I'm doing or like what my routines are. It's like it's like a behind the scenes kind of. So I enjoy doing them and I answering questions and stuff. So and just interacting, getting to know who I'm dealing with online. You know, so I encourage you to check that out. So. Anyways, this is um, the historic Los Angeles Athletic Club, the Blue Room. So this is like, um, they come here to do like magic shows sometimes. I remember I saw um, a mentalist here. Uh, he's like a magician kind of guy. You know, it's Hollywood, right? It's all this Hollywood stuff. So they have like this place called the Magic Castle or something in Hollywood, like a magician's club. Anyways, this guy, the mentalist, he was a young guy, man. He was like 23 years old. And like there must have been like 30, 40 people in here, um, because they they advertised it, right? It's like oh, all club members get to come and and to the show. This mentalist, mental, not a magician, a mentalist, and he went around the he he had like a little suit on. He was a young guy, right? And he went around to everybody, asked them their name, and like, but like you know, in a play, in, in like a way, like kind of hidden, lo, like low key. He's like, hey, I, I kind of know you. You're you're Jack. And I'm like, no, I'm, I'm not. And then, or like some name. He mentioned some name. And I'll be like, no, I'm David. And he goes, oh, David, from where? And he'll ask like a little background. Anyways, he did this on and like for like an hour long. I, and like nobody really paid attention to him, you know? But anyways, then when the show started, they introduced whatever. And then he came on stage. Well, came right here. And he went through the whole room and, uh, and, and, and recited everyone's name in order as he as he uh you know and like he didn't get anybody wrong it, I like I've never seen something like that and I was thinking man if I could do that with stocks how do I do that with trading like I'm able to go back and remember a stock that I traded a month ago two months ago whatever you know how do you do that like this mentalist went around the room and got everybody's name. And I was like, there's no way this is like organized. Cause he asked me my name by the time he came to me, uh, because he had everybody stand up and be like, David. And I'm like, how the fuck did this guy know that? Like he remembered everybody's name in order one by one. And he didn't go up to everybody in order. So I don't know. I thought, of, I, you know, that was impressive for me. That's the first time I, I attended a show like that. And, um, yeah, it got me thinking, man. It got me thinking about uh, how to remember stocks that I traded. This is one thing I've been working on myself to improve on. Because after you hit profitability, you start making a lot of money. Um, it's like different levels of improvement. So for me right now, like I'm trying to improve with uh, my routines and like getting better rest and like taking it, breaking things down to the smallest detail and just like going deeper. So one of these things has been like a lot of my... I had brain scans done last year by Doc Amen. Um, spec scans, S-P-E-C, where they, they do a different type of scan. Tom Brady had the same scans. Anyways, there's an app called Brain HQ. After I read the TB12 method by Tom Brady, I downloaded his book on audio on Amazon Audible. Um, really sick. It goes through all his routines because this guy played up until his early 40s. I was like, whatever he's, he did, I, I need to do it. I want all of the stuff that he got. Um, and he came up with like a TB12 um line of supplements and stuff and so like i got them all and actually there's one uh that he talks about in the book it's like a chapter brain hq so brain hq is a game like a brain game to get your memory better and like he reached out to them uh, like i thought okay maybe there's he got sponsored by them or something he's just they're just trying to make money off this who knows but then I, I invited Brain HQ on my podcast after I used them for like a month or two. It's like a fifteen dollar a month subscription, and the, the brain scientist came on the podcast. It's an amazing podcast, by the way, and uh, he broke down how they came across Tom Brady. Tom Brady's coach, Alex Guerrero, I think, 
reached out to them and after they did brain scans and the spec scans um so i was like damn I'm, I'm doing the right thing so like i'm doing the stuff that brady's doing accidentally it's just like i saw doc Eamon's stuff online and i liked it and like now i can afford it so i go i, I went in and went through it. it's very expensive and the supplements that he tailors for you are very expensive also but now i'm also looking into like red light therapy i'm looking into all this stuff like sam Degash, um my partner and friend for from the conscious training academy he recommended a grounding mat i got this grounding mat at home now i'm taking like all like supplements i'm looking deeper into things but anyways going back to the brain hq scientist that came on the podcast I asked him, I was like, how do I do it? Because I'm taking all these supplements, I'm doing the Brain HQ app, I'm doing, because my, my thinking is, okay, if I can improve my memory, if I can improve my mental performance, or just be, you know, at the highest performing level that I can get, it's gonna help me like for trading, right? And one of these things is the memory. Memory is, is like so big. So I told the Brain HQ guys, like, how do you, the scientists on the podcast, I was like, how can I remember like what I ate like three weeks ago, like for lunch or something? I want to remember everything. And he's like, you know, sometimes you don't need to remember everything. You just, you know, you just need to remember key things and you have like, it's like his son. So he showed an example of his son as a jazz musician. He said his son can like listen to jazz music and remember like the history behind it and the people from the certain time periods and all this and go deep into it. So he remembers that because he's deeply interested in that. So it's like what I was getting out of that conversation was like you need context and experiences to, to really remember to, to internalize something f like for good, you know, like you own it. So, that, so that's like kind of like what the mentalist did, going back to that guy, like with the names. So he asked me like where I'm from, my name. He probably remembers certain things about how I looked, where I was positioned in the room. There's got to be some trick that he was doing. I didn't even look that much into it. But the concept is there that he needed some context to remember. And what I'm going with is, um, is that's like for trading, like when you're journaling, you know? So you need to extensively journal. And that's what I've done over the years. I, I, was, I, re I was reflecting back the other day of how I journaled. And I've journaled, um, I went to my old Trader View journal. It was, a free, it was a free journal, so they let you upload four times a, a, a month. I think, I think it's still the same, unless you have Centerpoint. Centerpoint now has the gold one. Instead of paying 50 bucks a month, if you have Centerpoint, um, you got TraderView now. You got TraderView, Trade Ideas, Trader Sync. Centerpoint is doing really well. In fact, uh, in the show notes, there's a link to get like um, a really good deal with Centerpoint. It's, it's the best deal out there. So. Uh, go check that out. Um, but yeah, going back to it, so I was looking at my old Trader View journal, trading journal, and um, I was looking at how I used to journal, which was like 500 words minimum per loss, and I would write like two paragraphs per like just for trade. And um, and yeah, you know, so so I really was doing the right thing back then. The 500 words, I was forcing myself to stick in there to, to come up with stuff that, you know, I really didn't want to write about, but I wrote about it. I wrote about my feelings of, of, in the trade, how the trade was affecting me, why did I size up too much into the trade, why did I, did I have rest the night before, did I have FOMO, why did I have FOMO, what's going on deeper, I was just digging deeper and deeper and deeper. And I was doing the right thing, as, as, along with um, writing about the trade, writing about the float, my thesis, how I executed the thesis, my entry, my exit, everything. So when you give yourself that, that long minimum requirement to write, I think it was a good start. It was a good start. So like, um, and I couldn't afford the TraderView monthly subscription, so I stuck to the free one and I would upload the trades in the weekend and I would go over them, all of them in the weekend. Um, this is when I had only an interactive broker's account and um yeah man it was it was good it was, it was good i did i did the right things so like minimizing my expenses early on by not have not paying for the subscription to good move because you want to minimize the amount of pressure you have to perform by having minimizing expenses you're running this like a business anyways so that was a good move and then i had like about i don't know 500 trades like that that i journal like that and then when I went to Puerto Rico in 2021, I switched it all over. I moved it all over to Trader Sync. 
because I like Fitter Sync because they have an app. And the app um, helps me, like, you know, I could analyze the stats more in depth. But I would still continue the same routines, the same minimum criteria for me to write about the trades as I was doing Trader Sync. So that worked out well. And, um, and then after so many years, in 2022, no, 2023, last year is when I stopped writing and I started doing more video reviews. And I remember I did a podcast with James Freelander. And he told me, and he got it from someone else, but like he told me he, he does audio reviews and, you know, as, and during the trading day, and he'll go over it like tape, like, a, like an athlete goes over tape, you know what I mean? So, uh, video. And I was like, you know what, let me do this videos now and I'll put them on YouTube along with my podcast. So, I have earned the right, and then to, to go deeper way back into that, on like podcast number six, um, with, 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 uh, Cody, Cody Catermole, Brandon Whitehead, and Mike Kingsbury, we were at Trade Space, went to the conference room, we did a whole podcast on journaling and how important, and these are like systematic traders. You know, even they journal. They journal everything. They keep track of stats. And Cody, I remember, said, you got to earn the right to not journal. And so these are, these are good traders. I think they're doing pretty well overall. I haven't, I haven't kept track of them for the longest, but I'm sure they're doing well. They had great habits and, you know, they, they, they know what they're doing. You know, overall, they like, I'm sure they're doing well. So anyways, if we're talking about all that and like this podcast has always been about that early on, you can see the history of the journaling uh, routines and the journaling habits that I have that I talk about. And I don't talk about them as much anymore because like I've done how many podcasts now? It's like, and I've grown to other levels. But like to, for, for a beginner or intermediate or even advanced to think, not advanced, I'll say the beginner, if you're not even profitable and you're not journaling, like, man, you're, you're, you're not going to succeed, man, straight up. You got to journal, man. You got to journal. You got to keep track of your stats. That's why all these Forex traders fail. They, they click, click, click the button. They do 50, 60 trades in one day for like a couple bucks here, a couple bucks there, and they don't, they don't journal anything, you know? So you got you to journal all the stuff. Um, you know what I mean? So like, that's why they fail. So how do you even journal if you're just doing all, executing all these trades just on the spot without really thinking? You know what I mean? And it's the same thing with the old people over trading the stocks. You know, they, they execute all these trades, they have all these mess of trades and they like, they're not even journaling it. And, um, if you were to pause and reflect on all those trades, you probably eliminate a lot of those trades because they were bad trades and there's no reason to do all this over trading. You probably dig deep into figuring out why you were over trading all those things in the first place. So journaling, you, you get like a sense of awareness that comes out of like from the journaling and the reflection and you get to start omitting stuff, omitting stuff and like understanding your behaviors, you know? So you got to understand your behavior. Why did you do certain behaviors? You know, we're, we're human beings. We're not perfect. So like when you start making mistakes, why did you do those mistakes? There's something going on. You knew not to do them. There's something, so there's something with your behavior, you know? But um, I wanted to make this podcast too because like it's so easy not to journal. Already like 90% fail, right? Let's say 90%. I think it's like 96% failure rate. You know what I mean? You already had, the odds are super stacked against you. But what is one commonality of the people that succeed? Journaling. Journaling is one, an, an easy one to start with. All the successful traders journaled extensively. You know? And if you see me, like, doing these video reviews, I'm at a high level now, man. You can't, comp you know, if you're starting out trying to get profitability, you can't, you can't, like, try to do what a guy like is like way up there doing you know so you got to start like how did i start or for many years i remember being like up like 600k and i'm still freaking journaling like crazy you know um i would i remember when i was in in trade space in puerto rico every morning the stats would uh, would would like you know re, you know like get uh re-uploaded to your statement or something i would download it Upload it to Trader Sync. I would journal in the pre-market what I traded yesterday because now the trade shows up on your statement or whatever. Um, now you have like Kinfo can do it automatically. You don't have to do all that. But um, but yeah, you got to journal, bro. 
you got to journal. And like, why are people not journaling? Are they lazy? You're trying to get profitable and it's something that's so hard to do to begin with and you're not journaling? What's, what, like why? You, you, you don't want to get profitable? Is that what it is? Like, it, it's a simple thing to, to start doing, but people don't understand why they do it. And like, that's the thing. So like, that means their ego is in the way. They think they know more. There's, like, there's something else going on. Cause like, if all the successful people do it, you just do it. That's it. You just do it. You know, you don't really even gotta, but you're like, oh, I gotta get into my feelings and this and that. Yeah, you do, man. You know, and it's crazy, like the, the journal, like nobody sees it but you. Um, most of those journals, let's say like 90, 95% of them, I write them all down. In the past, I'll write them all down and I never revisit it again. You know, uh, I'm just getting that awareness out, getting those thoughts out and getting them, you know, completing the thought process and like internalizing the lessons. Um, these days, when I do those video reviews for the bear subscribers on the YouTube or, you know, on audio, I put it on audio as well for the Discord, but bear, like it has uh, the charts. Um, I make the full review of my trades. That's for me, first and foremost. I'm not trying to like give, give stuff. I'm not doing this to please the, the people watching or the subscribers. I don't really care, man. I'm trying to improve as a trader. And I got to do as well for what, what helps me improve because that's, that's what I want to do, right? So when I finish doing that and I upload it, when I go to eat dinner, you see me a lot of times at a Japanese uh, barbecue place. That place is awesome. And, um, or the Brazilian steakhouse. What do you think I'm doing there? I'm, I'm re-listening to my review. So Sam Degash, he calls it rehearsal. And he got it from like Joe Dispenza. Joe Dispenza was listening to one of his books and it, it reiterates a lot of the things Sam says because Sam learned from Joe Dispenza. And uh, he says like rehearsal is very important. And um, it goes back to that mentalist there. That mentalist must have rehearsed. He got context. He remembered everybody's name. The Brain HQ guy even said that you need context just like his son with the jazz and the music and this. So how do you get context for, for, for trading like that? Like all this stuff ties together. So you journal. You write, like when I write what was going on, like M-A-R-K, I lost, a, I had a max loss the other day. M-A-R-K, Mark, this stock ran in sympathy in 2021 with P-H-U-N, D-W-A-C, had nothing to do with it. It has a Chinese exec. The Chinese exec put out this tweet. It wasn't the first time they did it. So I'm, I'm, now I remember that tweet. I remember the next time M-A-R-K runs, I'm like, yeah, oh, this guy, he did this that, that time. He said an $80 million deal. But it wasn't really an $80 million deal. And I knew, and I was calling the bluff, but I was in too early. So next time you gotta remember, like it can go 200, 300% or more, even though it has a large float, it can do that a lot more. So now you remember the context, what it did last time, what it did in 2021. In 2020, it was tied to drones. So this is how like you remember it for good, you know? So how do you do that with like a bunch of stocks, you know? Um, you got a journal, you got to create that context. So you remember it, you can recall it. So like a lot of these stocks that I'm trading, that I'm nailing, like um, they call it skeet, like we're shooting, they throw the Frisbees up and shoot it. How am I doing that so, so like so quickly? I'm doing it because I can recall stocks from all this journaling, all this experience, all this screen time, all this discussion that I've had with people. I had discussions with successful traders all the time. So like we talk about these stocks. So like I'm creating context to recall in the future. So when I see the stock come up, when it hits my trade idea scan, and I have my headset on, it goes, and it's like, let's say M-A-R-K, and I'm getting a cup of coffee. I'm like, all this information flashes through my head, and then I can short it that much faster with the more conviction, and that's how I'm able to execute. So just like the mentalist, he, you know, he can remember everybody's name. You know what I mean? He create, how did he do that? Well, no errors, no errors, you know? It's not magic. So, you know, so I, yeah, I wanted to make this, this um, podcast about that, like memory, like, you know, creating context for yourself through journaling. Journaling is the key, man. You don't want to be like these Forex guys that fail. First of all, they're up against banks. They're up against algos, funds, George Soros and all his, his minions. And all you're doing is just clicking the button in and out. Oh, double top, uh, buy, short, sell. Like with, and then you just move on. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. You don't, how are you going to stand a chance? So, 
Yeah, you got a journal, man. You got a journal. Anyway, so so Sunday, um, to wrap it up now, so Sunday, March 3rd, we're going to come over here and have a mastermind. Um, my good friend Ellis Hobbs is going to lead that conversation. We're going to have some other excellent traders here. It's going to be pretty sick, man. I'm really excited for it. Uh, March 2nd is the main event, 9 to 5 p.m., 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. at the Doubletree in downtown Los Angeles in Little Tokyo. Um, dope area, man. Little Tokyo, man. So I'll, I, I love Japanese culture, man. I, I was in Japan last year. It's freaking awesome. Um, uh, what else? Oh, yeah, Friday, March 1st is going to be the U.S. Bank Tower. We're going to go visit my office. You can see my setup. You can ask me any question, man. I, like, ask me anything in person. Like, you may, you're, you're there. You, you're, you get to see everything how it is. All my accounts, everything. You know, it's all there. All of my setup, like my scanners and charting and whatever it is you want to see, the whole area, like, you can see and make sense of it. So I think it's important because like, you get a, this behind-the-scenes look of, like, my routines, my habits, um, how I go about things, you know what I mean? So like, and how everything works so efficiently. Everything's organized, you know? So you can get a lot of takeaways from that. So anyways, that concludes this. I'm gonna go work out now before they close over here. So they have a gym downstairs. I'm gonna go work out. They have a dinner spot here, but man, like, I've really gotten spoiled, man. Now I just go to Brazilian or Japanese. But today, I think I'm gonna go venture off. I heard, oh yeah, so Sam, started a new podcast called rising minds and man it's so good i listen to like three or four times each episode they're quick they're like 10 15 minutes and uh the last one he mentioned and i think he's i think low-key he's taking a shot at me because <laughs> i eat the same restaurant every day you know and he's like yeah you know sometimes it's good for the brain to you know make new connections and rewire like trying new restaurants traveling to new places i got the traveling to new places down but like i go to the same restaurant every day it's like brazilian steakhouse brazilian steakhouse brazilian steakhouse japanese barbecue japanese barbecue japanese barbecue so i was like when i heard that i was like oh man um i'm getting too used to one one thing i gotta try more restaurants i tried them all in the area but there's a couple that i want to try out and i i think tonight i'm going to try a new one just because of sam's uh advice from that podcast it's very good. So that podcast is very good. I'm going to be coming on there as, as a guest and all that, but that, that's Sam pod, Sam's podcast. And, um, yeah, I'm excited, and I'm showing him the ropes of the whole podcast game. So we're going to see a lot of Sam's insight into the mind, which is it's awesome, man. It's like It really it helped my trading, and I want to bring that into the trading world, you know, bring Sam into it uh, with the podcast. So, yeah, go check that out. And, um, yeah, conference tickets still available um if you're in the friendly bear discord or you're a member at the for the youtube channel i have a discount code for you still it's uh it's coming it's gonna expire soon so yeah you gotta use it up soon but uh, either either way um i'll see you guys later i'm probably make i'm getting used to these podcasts i want to start doing them more um but yeah i'll see you guys later